Welcome to our last session. Oh, let's start again. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. This is our last uh, session of this webinar series. And welcome. Uh, I have a special request from Council Choi to make a slight change to today's agenda. So we are going to have Mr. Ryu, president of, of COSA. Uh, he will give us uh, his remark later in the program. And toward the end of today's session, I'll be sharing resources. And also, I will introduce a special uh, project that many of you can get involved with the monetary incentives. OK, so stay in tune. Um, and because we are crunched with time, my introduction to speakers and guests will be very brief. <laughs> um, we have two special guests who will be making brief remarks. First will be uh, Trustee Rosa Kim for, for, from Fremont Union High School, High School District. And next will be Assembly Member Steve Choi. Uh, let's have first uh, Trustee Rosa Kim. Could you give us a remark? Thank yeah, you. Yeah, sure. Hello, everyone. It is such a pleasure to be in you all. My name is Rosa Kim. Uh, my Korean name is Kim Hyunju. Uh, I'm a school board member of a high school district uh, in the Bay Area in Northern California. Um, I have been working with ICANN and Korean American Ethnic Studies Advisory Committee, Hoseum Dut, to include Korean American studies in ethnic studies model curriculum. Throughout the process, I was so proud that we submitted incredibly wonderful seven lesson plans to California Department of Education. So there's no other ethnic group who submitted that many wonderful lesson plans to CDE. And we had really great feedback from the director of curriculum in the CDE. And I truly, truly appreciate all the effort of our Korean American scholars and educators who created those seven lesson plans. Since then, uh, I have had many chances to attend um, events on ethnic studies, including my own district's ethnic studies uh, learning collaborative. So I have three takeaways I'd like to share with you all. Number one, so ethnic studies is project-based learning. So it gives tremendous opportunities. So students can do their own research based on their family experience. Number two, Korean American studies is a part of Asian American studies and it would better be taught with a broader picture of Asian American history. So as you know, May is AAPI Heritage Month. So Korean American history and Korean American historical figures like Sammy Lee or Young Woo Kim can be taught in May and also the PBS TV documentary, Asian Americans, which, which also has Korean American history and many other Asian American history. And number three, finally, we need to continue developing resources and curriculum and share them with other teachers. Ethnic studies can be taught in other subject area like English and other social studies subjects. So you all can create and share all the resources and curriculum with other school, other teachers in your school. Thank you so much for all your hard work and good luck to you all. Thank you, Rosa Kim. Thank you. Uh, now, Assembly Stephen Choi, would you like to say a few words? You are muted. Sorry, you are muted. Um, assembly. <laughs> you need to unmute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and, and it's uh, my pleasure to join you to uh, uh, your final uh, uh, workshop uh, session to, to develop uh, uh, Korean American experience a model curriculum. As an assembly member uh, from Orange County, I've uh, paid a great deal of uh, attention to uh, AB 101 at the studies uh, requirement for the uh, high school graduates. Uh, I was the only uh, Republican member who voted uh, yay for uh, that bill. And then I had a lot of uh, uh, attacks uh, from uh, the constituents uh, and then also my party members. And then I continuously uh, defended uh, what's wrong 
wrong uh, with the uh, ethnic studies uh, requirement because uh, the content of the bill has uh, nothing to do with the CRT, critical race theory. There's no such a thing to teach CRT. They are distorting the content, the intent of the bill. My purpose of uh, supporting the bill is uh, twofold. First of all, uh, I'm an uh, immigrant as a Korean American and uh, living, having lived in this country, I've gone through many different uh, uh, stories. Uh, I faced myself uh, and then also have observed. Uh, and uh, therefore, this is uh, the country of uh, made up of uh, different immigrants uh, and understanding each other is a very, very important. If we get to know it personally, who you are, where you come from, we became, uh, become friends. So in that vein, uh, ethnic studies uh, of uh, uh, Asian culture, Korean culture, Hispanic culture, black culture, even American culture, that will give us a broader understanding and a generosity and that we can live in a community that we share uh, in peace and harmony. That's the intent. That's the reason I supported the bill. And, and I strongly uh, believe uh, our Korean uh, American studies uh, model curriculum uh, will truly will become the model for other ethnic studies. Uh, and uh, we uh, eliminate uh, any uh, questions uh, and then also any dangers uh, that the teachers uh, may try to distort uh, the intent of the bill. Uh, which I believe uh, will be signed into law. Uh, I have not uh, checked with the current status. Uh, it has uh, uh, now gone uh, to the Senate uh, and then eventually it'll end up at the governor's desk and uh, what, whether the governor will veto or sign, that will be the critical thing uh, that uh, we are waiting uh, for. Uh, and, and I believe uh, it, it will have a great chance uh, to pass. So once it passes, uh, our Korean American studies uh, model curriculum will serve for other ethnic studies uh, so that either you are Korean American, Asian American, Japanese, it uh, uh, doesn't matter. We can understand the black history, Hispanic history, and uh, for them to un also understand that the contributions of uh, all other immigrant ethnic background uh, uh, society and the normal people who have lived here today you know, for centuries now. So that's the reason I strongly believe uh, this is a, a very important uh, effort that the, we are doing. And then I uh, truly appreciate uh, all the detailed uh, uh, elimination of uh, uh, so many uh, uh, different uh, uh, lesson plans uh, that uh, you may have uh, uh, shifted through and then coming up with a uh, uh, true core uh, essential content uh, of uh, Korean American experience uh, uh, that to be included uh, in the short curriculum that the high school students will have to uh, experience. Uh, with that, I would like to end uh, by thanking all the working group members uh, uh, for meeting so many times. I believe that this is our uh, seventh time you are meeting. Uh, so you have uh, contributed uh, so much of your time and uh, effort uh, to come up with the uh, model curriculum. I hope that this will uh, contribute uh, to other ethnic group, groups of, uh, uh, to understanding of uh, our side of culture and we can live uh, in peace and harmony and uh, build uh, this beautiful country together. Thank you, Assemblyman uh, Stephen Choi. And thank you, Trustee no. uh, Rosa Kim for your insight. Now uh, we will have a, a, our first presentation with uh, Ms. Ellen Park. She's principal and Cedar Lane Academy, Hacienda La Puente Unified School District. The topic that she will be, uh, present is Korean American Unity for Independence. Okay. Principal Park. Hi, uh, good afternoon everyone. Um, Yes, I'm Ellen Park. I'm principal at Cedar Lane Academy. It's a K-8 public school 
in Hacienda Heights. Uh, I was the last person to submit the lesson plan uh, to, at that time, the Korean Education Council General or the attache. Um, she, she gave me like three days. <laughs> so, uh, I submitted and luckily for me, um, it was submitted and uh, approved. Um, so by whoever committee that was, whatever uh, committee that was. And I'm also the last one to present, but um, I know I only have 10 minutes. So I'm going to go really fast with my presentation. Uh, that was meant for about 30 minutes. So I hope you can see uh, my screen. <clears throat> okay, so uh, where's, uh, where's my... Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, it's called Amer Korean American Unity for Independence. So this pretty much talks about the Asian American, uh, how they played into the Korean independence. Okay, um, and very quickly too. So in my lesson plan, uh, my theme was the strengths of the Koreans, uh, united for the Korean independent movement, that there was courage, pa patriotism, wisdom, and talent that brought um, the Koreans and Korean Americans together uh, for the Korean independence movement. Okay, and I'm going to skip some of the things. Uh, if you want the whole lesson plan, I will submit it to Janie who can share with you. So this lesson will use different media, uh, videos, books, articles, uh, vocabulary, uh, words as well. Objective is for your students uh, to be able to learn about the Korean independence from Japan, and then the influence of Udro President Wilson and the Korean nationalists uh, that were also uh, living or studying in America at the time. Okay, and the students will be able to research, write, discuss, and create uh, presentations. Okay, so. <clears throat> So for those of you who are non-Korean Americans or non-Koreans who don't know anything about Korean independence movement, this was like many, many years ago during um, in the 1900s, early 1900s, okay? And there was a Japanese col colonization in Korea, okay? And at that time, the uh, Korea was not divided. Uh, and then we will, what I want this, the teachers to do with this lesson is to portray how America played a vital role in the movement uh, to lead, help, to help lead Korea um, into uh, independence. Okay, so <clears throat> Korean immigrants in America played a vital role because they didn't just contribute money, but they organized, they were able to organize patriotic activities outside of Korea because they couldn't do that in Korea freely, uh, but they were able to do that in universities in America, in churches in America uh, to help uh, the liberation, okay? Uh, so we will also study about some of the Korean Americans who helped, uh, who contributed to this. So some of the essential questions you can list for your students is uh, the 14 points, which was a huge factor uh, from President Wilson uh, that influenced the Korean independence movement. And about the nationalists who lived in, uh, who studied in USA and what is patriotism and what does it mean to be a nationalist and how did that influence people of Korea even after the independence, okay? <clears throat> All right, so lesson steps uh, and ideas, um, you know, you're going to ask this, tell the students what they're going to learn and there's gonna be 
I included in my lesson plan some chapters from uh, books like Korean American History. Uh, I know like Professor Parks, uh, John Park and other Park have written. So I have included chapters from there. I have included some of the strategies that you can use, like the annotation chart that would help uh, guide your uh, discussions with your students and uh, sample language support, like the sentence frames. Okay, yes, because this can be elementary, middle school, or high school lesson. So pretty much uh, there's a fact sheet in my lesson uh, about history of Korea that led to Independence Day on August 15, uh, which no, is known also as Gwangbokje in Korean. Okay, and, and uh, what happened with the Japanese uh, imperial rule from 1910 to 1945. Okay, and what was going on during that Japanese imperial rule? Right? Nobody wants to be under uh, the rule of another country. And Koreans are very proud, very strong uh, people. And they fought to uh, gain independence from Japan uh, for all those years. Okay, um, and then what happened behind the scene? And I'm not going to read everything or go over all that, but what I'm trying to do is even if the teacher doesn't have a textbook uh, to guide them, I'm giving them uh, fact sheets and history uh, behind the, the independence movement so that you can have it readily for you uh, to help, okay? So part of the history, there's quick fact sheet about the uh, KIM, uh, you know, and then uh, it finally happened, right? Uh, and uh, Japan surrender in the Pacific War, and that also led to um, uh, freeing our uh, Koreans uh, from Japanese rules, okay? And I included some YouTube videos that you can have your students watch. Uh, and this video is called Liberation of Korea. So I searched uh, many of the videos that are out there uh, on YouTube, but uh, I picked uh, some of them that are really good and in English as well. Okay, so uh, I know that not all students that you will have are Koreans who can uh, comprehend Korean. And then some discussion ideas, okay? And I put lots of facts from like Wikipedia, encyclopedia, you know, things like that. So they're really history facts and not something that I made up, okay? Um, and about the 14 points, which was huge. Okay, uh, this actually, the, the Korean Americans are the students who are studying in America. They took the 14 points, this famous speech that Woodrow Wilson did uh, before Congress in 1918. They took that uh, and they discussed them. And they this led to giving them ideas about what it's going to look like when there is independence uh, from Japan. Okay, and it motivated uh, the nationalists uh, that they can actually develop a country like America uh, that is, you know, uh, more westernized and more, uh, you know, uh, working towards peace. Okay, and so in mine, I, I also have Woodrow Wilson's speech uh, on YouTube, okay? Um, and also a deeper uh, discussion about Korean nationalists in America. So there are many articles and studies about uh, the Korean independence movement. Uh, on one great one was uh, at Boston University. Uh, many of the students from Korea went to Boston University. 
as students. And they gathered there, um, actually met, and then they formally introduced the Korean Declaration of Independence to the world. And there are documents about how they were inspired of, uh, by President Wilson's uh, 14 points. So some of the facts are there. Uh, and then uh, I also wanted to include some of the famous Korean American uh, or the Korean independent nationalists who studied in Korea, like you know, Philip J. Sohn, um, Sung Man Ri, uh, and who they were, and how the churches or the Christianity helped to be a force for independence. Uh, many of the nationalists met at churches. There were many American missionaries in Korea helping with the movement as well. Okay, and also the churches were very safe place for um, some of the nationalists to gather uh, and meet uh, and do some of the movement activities. Uh, and then about Sung Man Ri, because he's, uh, he was the very first Korean uh, president before we had kings, emperors. Uh, so he is very important to study. And he also, um, work diligently uh, to have that Korean independence movement, okay? Uh, he actually studied it uh, in America uh, as well. And so you wanna go deeper into learning about him. Also, especially for younger students, uh, you know, there's that KWL chart that you can do to brainstorm. You know, what do you know about how USA influenced Korean independence movement. What do you want to know? And then at the end of the lesson or lessons, you know, uh, discuss and write down about what they learned. Okay. So more stories about independence and Dr. Ree. Okay, and then um, where these things were um, found. So students can actually do some research about these people. And then here's another uh, YouTube um, video on Korean independence called Death Day. And this portrayed the Korean Americans and churches in America that helped the independence movement. Oh, and I really love this girl, <laughs> uh, Yu Guan Soon. Uh, she was the female Korean nationalist. And even though she wasn't part of the, the Korean American movement or uh, in America, but I really felt that everyone needed to uh, throw in this girl, uh, the young Korean nationalist female uh, who made a difference by marching the streets of Seoul uh, and, and, you know, really being a true patriot, okay? Um, and then more media, there, were, there are many wonderful uh, movies uh, made about the independence uh, and uh, movement. This one was about uh, Yu Guan Sun. I actually watched it myself at one of the theaters here. Uh, it's about her and um, the spirit of Korea about Yu Gan Soon, but you can now watch it on YouTube. So you might wanna play uh, some clips from there. I also added another one that may be very popular to college students or high school students, Mr. Sunshine. I mean, who didn't watch this drama? But this drama is about <laughs> young Koreans and some students in America who helped the Korean independence. Uh, such a, uh, you know, excellent actors and actresses uh, and who doesn't love to watch Korean drama, right? But it has love, it has the passion, it has the fights, it has the you know, a little glimpse of what they were doing in America, you know, <laughs> but uh, that's another excellent uh, drama to watch yourself. And then, you know, you can share some clips uh, with your students. And then what can you do? 
some assignments after you watch um, the media or you, they can create a theme song, music presentation and present to the class. And then reflection and assessments. You know, we have uh, some think pair share strategies and some questions to answer, uh, to think outside of the box, to uh, think pair share, to solve problems. Uh, and, and they can create a chart, PowerPoint, iMovie, or anything else to present to the class. So in conclusion, what, what can you conclude about this, right? Um, and we can just have that discussion, okay? Uh, and project-based learning activities about the theme, which was courage, patriotism, wisdom, and talent. You know, when you combine all of that, you can actually uh, save a country, right? So, you know, what does that mean to you? And do some compare and contrast uh, with Korean independence movement, with American or Mexican independence movement, or even American Revolution, okay? Uh, especially for uh, high school students, uh, finding similarities and differences and then doing some project-based learning. And for teachers who don't know what it is, I also included uh, uh, some links that can help teach you what it is uh, so you can use it in your class. Okay, 10 minutes. <laughs> Do you have any questions and answer? Uh, I can answer. All right, you can reach out to me if you like the, uh, the lesson plan. I'm not sure, uh, Dr. Cho, if we are allowed to give it out yet, but yes, yes. Um, yeah, just so uh, email me. Okay. All Thank right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, we speaker. should have been in your whole day. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now I got to go to another one in LA. Okay. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Principal Park, for wonderful presentation with full of classroom application and resources. And uh, by the way, we will be uh, giving you the uh, original lesson plan as well. Yes, Before you leave, can you. we take a quick picture? Oh, it would be okay. great if we can take yes, a quick yes. picture. So right. Judy, can you help us with this? Yes, I'm ready. I will wait okay. seconds for everyone else to be ready with their cameras on. Okay. Yes, time is a little tight today. If you had mm -hmm. questions, if you are trying to come up with your question, you know you have one, please feel free to email me. Mm -hmm. uh, I will send it to all the presenters as always. Right. So yeah. please put it in the chat. Mm -hmm. All right, thank yeah. you for having your cameras on. I will take a photo. This will be our last group photo, last session. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Have a thank great you. afternoon. Thank Good you. job, Ellen Park. Thank, thank you, thank you. you. Now, next, uh, we have a, a special presentation on the topic of Korean War and transnational adoption from, uh, by Dr. Suzy Wu, and she's an associate professor from Cal State Fullerton. I think it will be uh, wonderful after the independence, we had the war, and I think it leads to your presentation really well. So, Dr. Wu. Okay, great. Um, thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this. I'm going to share my screen and while I try and figure this out, bear with me because I was trying to figure out how to show a presentation while not showing my notes. <laughs> so let me give me just a second to size this up. I think I figured this out. So you could tell me if you could just see the slide. Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, thank you so much for having me here. I'm super excited to be a part of this. I normally teach at this time, so I'm sorry I've missed all of the other meetings that we've had, but I just wanted to echo the points that um, Trustee Kim and Assemblyman Choi and also Ellen Park's great presentation, uh, the importance of ethnic studies. And so I just want to spend one minute about that. Um, you know, I teach at Cal State Fullerton in the American Studies Department, and I teach courses on um, focusing on race and immigration. And a lot of times my students, you know, they end up telling me later, you know, I wish I had um, ethnic studies in high school. You know, I'm learning about all these things for the first time. I've thought about race relations, but I've never really um, had an opportunity to study. And I've also never had an opportunity to study myself or my experiences. 
businesses. And so I know that this is so important. And I, did, I just think all the time, how wonderful would it be if they had this kind of experience and access K through 12? So I'm really, I believe in the Ethics Studies Project. I'm so excited that we're doing this. Um, go Korean for having so many Korean American lessons. Um, I'm super excited about that too. And so uh, the one that I put together is about the Korean War and about transnational adoptions. And so um, this lesson plan is geared towards 11th graders and it fits with the US history and social studies area. And it aligns with standards alignment 11.9 US foreign policy since World War II. So it's pretty specific, but also the topic is really um, kind of heavy. So I think that it fits better for high school students than it would for elementary school students. And so one of the reasons why I felt a lesson plan like this would be important is because, of course, the Korean War is often referred to as the Forgotten War, but it has, of course, had lasting effects for millions of Koreans on both sides of the Pacific. And it also had effects, of course, for the hundreds of thousands of U.S. servicemen and women, mostly servicemen at this time, who fought in this war, and also because it's still incredibly relevant to our lives um, today. So in 1953, an armistice was signed to end the fighting, but the war is still not technically over. Um, as we know, there are still great tensions, obviously, between North Korea and South Korea. We hear about this in our news every day. So I think that this is, um, even though this is a historical topic, it is definitely relevant to our lives today. And hopefully that will make it uh, help your students draw the connections between these two things. Um, and so I think that many of you know about the Korean War, but I just wanted to share some of uh, some facts about the war or some statistics. So between 1950 and 1953, when the war was um, waged, the war claimed the lives of over, many people estimate over 3 million Koreans and an estimated 36,000 Americans. And it left the Korean Peninsula in ruins. And this lesson centers upon the history of the Korean War, and it takes a close look at one of the many lasting outcomes of this war. So I was trying to think of how to position this, you know, um, so the way that I've structured it is a three different lessons, one on the historical context of the war, and then a kind of a close up view of one of the many different outcomes or the many different kinds of people who are affected by this war and by focusing on one group in particular, Korean transnational adoptions, um, adoptees. So that is kind of an overview of this lesson plan. Um, for the first part on the Korean War and the historical contexts, um, this, uh, you know, this film is, it's a pretty heavy film. So I think that I would suggest maybe screening it yourself before you decide if this is appropriate for your students or not. It's one I, sh it's one I show my college students. Um, and, you know, there's often many uh, great conversations that are had you know, from this film. They also have this incredible study guide and I have included the, the link here. Well, you can't see it, but um, I've included it in my lesson plan and it's a really comprehensive study guide that gives a really wonderful background of the Korean War that could be used in lecture format by the teacher to give students an overview of, of the war itself. And then it also has different activities and different kinds of questions. And so for this first lesson plan, um, it is about watching this film. The film is available through Canopy, which I don't know how many schools have access to Canopy. I hope that they do, but I'm sure that there are other ways to get this film. But it's um, a 30 minute film, it's about 30 minutes. And so the lesson plan would be to watch the film um, and then to ask these questions. And there are many more questions in the study guide, but these are questions that I pulled from the study guide that I think would be very um, useful for students to work together on their own first, then in a small group, and then with the class as a whole. So questions about what did you learn from this film? A lot of students will be learning about the Korean War for the first time. Also about how did the film make you feel? Because the film actually follows the perspectives of four Koreans who experienced the war and it talks about their personal experiences. So that is often something that people can really connect to. And the um, other question that I, have, I had suggested in the lesson plan is what do these stories and other archival photographs and film footage tell you about the lives of civilians during the war? And the reason why I focus so much on civilian experience is because I often think that gets lost in the politics of a war. It's often, um, there are lots of political histories and military histories that talk about wars from up here down. And I really want to encourage students to try and imagine um, what it was like for people who actually experienced war. So that's um, why I kind of pulled these questions from the study guide 
for students to work with. And as an assessment, um, I'm not I'm not as familiar with high school um, assessment strategies. I, I'm familiar with some, but I thought perhaps the teacher could create a Quizlet or a Kahoot, something that's kind of low stakes, but to kind of assess student knowledge about the, and their understanding of the Korean War. Um, and there's also this section, um, yeah. So I was thinking something like that, some kind of, kind of um, interesting, but low stakes kind of an assignment to help them really think about their, or you know, retell their understanding of, or what they learned from, from this project. The second lesson plan that I was thinking of focuses on Korean adoptions and the cultural politics of the Cold War. And so um, in the lesson plan, I've included two different historical background sections where teachers can kind of pull the information to put together their own PowerPoint or their own lecture um, to teach students about this, about this particular population of children who were directly affected by the war. And so um, during the Korean War, it's estimated that after the war, that 100, an estimated 100,000 Korean children were left homeless after the war. And there were um, many Americans particularly white Christian Americans who went to Korea to help resolve this issue. Many Korean Chris, many um, US missionaries were already in Korea during the war. They were there before the war, um, especially post independence. There were many missionaries who were already on the ground in Korea, but they um, focused on this narrative of rescue around Korean children in particular. And so um, I've included all of this history and this background in the lesson plan itself. But one of the missionary groups or missionary individuals who I focus on or who I talk about are Harry and Bertha Holt. And so I just wanted to show you a photograph. I included this photograph in the lesson plan as well. Here's Bertha and here's Harry. Um, they were two Christian evangelicals um, who lived in Oregon and uh, they took it upon themselves to rescue, rescue Korean children from Korea, but not just any Korean child, particularly the mixed race Korean child. And so these were the children who were born um, as a result of US military occupation in South Korea, which began in 1945, technically ended in 1948, but of course carried on through the war. Um, and so these were the mixed race children of US, pr predominantly US servicemen and um, Korean women. And this gets a little bit tricky because they're in my lesson plan in the history I do talk about US military sanctioned prostitution and how some of these children were the, the product of, of this US South Korean government sanctioned prostitution, uh, militarized prostitution. Um, I don't know how much you can go into that in at the high school level, but I think that it's a reality that um, is something that high school students could probably grapple with. So I've tried to word it in a way that might work um, for high school students, but that history has to, I think, be understood um, to understand how it was that these mixed race children came to be during and after the war. And here what you see is a project um, or the, the first quote unquote baby lift that was orchestrated by Harry Holt and his wife. And here they themselves adopted eight mixed race Korean children and they placed four mixed race children with other American families. And this is a photograph that captures that event. This happens um, October 14th in 1955. And so um, the Holts go on to create the Holt Adoption Program in 1956. They end up working closely with President Yi Sing Man to, um, according to President Rhee, he created this directive in 1953 to send all half American children to the quote unquote land of their fathers. And so he very actively worked to remove these children um, and place them into American homes. So on the Korean side, there was a lot of support from Yi Sing Man um, and the child, um, oh goodness, I'm blanking on the name. It's been a long day of teaching. Um, there was an organization, which I'm forgetting the name, but it's in my lesson plan um, to work with the Holtz and with other American organizations to create this pathway to transnational adoptions. And so this I often find is usually very interesting for students to think about, and you can contextualize it in the context of US race politics in the 1950s. If you think about Brown versus Board of Education in 1954, and the activism that, um, that's going on very publicly in the 1950s to have this arrival of Korean and especially mixed race children being brought into predominantly white homes was a, um, 
was really surprising, I think, for a lot of Americans. And so this is uh, caught the attention of, of many Americans and also encouraged many people to adopt. So between 1953 and 1965, over 6,000 Korean adoptees came to the United States. So in the 1950s, and it was estimated that 70% of the Korean adoptees, at least some say more, from Korea were of mixed race parentage. And however, the US really centered primarily on full-blooded Korean children when sharing news of these adoptions. And so for the activity for, for part two of the lesson plan, um, I, was, I proposed that students analyze an article from Life Magazine from 1956. And this is a document and photographic analysis um, activity. And so in this, in this story, you learn about Ri Kang Yong, who you see here. He was actually a child who during the Korean War was used on posters for war relief efforts. So um, this is a photograph from a war relief effort poster. He was also highlighted in Life Magazine during the war as the child who never smiled. And there was um, a story written about him in, the, in Life Magazine during the war. And then flash forward in 1956, which is what we see here, he is adopted. And he's adopted by a white American widow. And um, the activity asks students to read the text to underline words that describe his experience, this child's experience, and then to do a photographic analysis and to work in groups and with the class to share their findings. Um, and one of the things that, oops, some of the things that I hope that they will um, see is that this is very much a narrative about how this Korean boy went from um, being ravaged by war to being this robust, all-American child who writes carousels and talks on the phone and watches TV um, and how this narrative really pre presents this image of Korean adoptees as being children who are um, very assimilable, who are in need, who uh, would would um, thrive, automatically thrive in America. And one of the many teaching points that I have for teachers in the lesson plan is to help students think about, okay, if this is the public media narrative, um, what parts of these stories are missing? Um, what does this cover over in terms of what might the child really be experiencing? If we, we know about the Korean War now, we understand that it's likely that he lost both of his parents in the war. It's likely, or we know that he is Korean, so, and he's really young, so to leave one country and come to another that is very unfamiliar to you, what might that be like? And so to think about what public narratives teach the public about the Korean child and then to try and ask students to imagine what it might be like to be that child. And that's the part of this story that goes missing, right? And so that's kind of the juxtaposition that I wanted to set up in this lesson. Um, and then in my lesson plan in the historical background, I give examples of um, children who, according to social welfare records, were not adjusting well, who were very homesick, who had problems eating. There were all these different markers that indicated how traumatic this experience was for many of the children who did arrive as adoptees. It wasn't all as it appeared, right, in the public. And for the final lesson, uh, I was going to have the, I suggested that the students watch this documentary film by Deanne Borchet Lim, who is herself a Korean adoptee, who made this really moving and um, powerful film called First Person Plural. And in this section, I really wanted to focus on, okay, let's flip the perspective and really think about what the experience of an adoptee might be like. And again, this is not to say that all adoptee experiences are the same, it's to present the view, right? And to ask students to, to think differently. So I'm just gonna show you um, the trailer from this film. Hopefully this will work. Oh, it might not work. Okay, I might not have, well, I could try. Okay. POV, the best independent point of view documentary. We're off to another different time in our life now. We, we understand things better and uh, Hopefully it will bring us closer. From the moment that I arrived from Korea um, to San Francisco, uh, my father filmed every moment of our life together. 
and really captured this whole process of my becoming American. And the film is about my adoption and everything sort of going wonderfully, except that at a certain point, there's an unexpected turn of events. And I discovered that I wasn't who everybody thought I was and discover a whole new identity. This was a time, I think, in the United States where total assimilation was the norm and they didn't think of any other way to deal with me, really. To me, it was quite scary. I was afraid I was going to lose you. Traditionally, adoption has been so much about cutting off the birth family. There's so many secrets and, and lies, hidden tensions and things like that. This matter of non-communication is a two-way street. You could have said just exactly what you did now, and it would have thrown the doors wide open. My hope is that adoptees, birth families, and adoptive parents would be able to watch it together, and that it might give people courage to open up. Um, so sorry, I think some of you were not able to see the image, uh, but I included the link in the chat if you'd like to see the trailer on your own. Um, it's a really it's a really powerful film, and I think it would be really meaningful for high school students in particular because there's um, she discusses a lot about <clears throat> what it meant to be Korean in her high school and how she just didn't want to be Korean, how she wanted to be white like the majority of her friends at high school and there are images of her in high school and she talks a lot about her identity i just think there are so many things to talk about with this film and i think that documentary film has a way of reaching um you know people's feelings i think which is something that we don't do often enough i don't think and so i think it's a really beautiful film for your students to watch and to really think about the um you know, what are the different kinds of experience that adoptees might have themselves? What are some of the questions and, and things that they grapple with that maybe, you know, if you are not an adoptee, you, you might take for granted. And so I think it's um, a really fantastic film for a lot of reasons. And so with this film for the activity, um, really there needs to be a discussion that is had. I couldn't think of an activity that wasn't a discussion or a paper. Um, <clears throat> and so some of the questions that I wanted to, have students think about is what did you learn about the perspective of Cha Jung Hee, who is Deanne Borchet Lim, that's her American uh, adopted, her name that was given to her by adopted par adoptive parents. Uh, the Korean adoptee from watching this film, what were some of her experiences, her feelings? How was her adoption connected to the aftermath of the Korean War? And this is where I want them to connect to the lesson two, part two, and explain how this film has altered or expanded your previous understanding of adoptions. And so I think that this film and these kinds of questions could generate really interesting dialogue. Um, for the assessment portion, I had suggested uh, writing you know, either a collection of 10 sentences about the film or perhaps a paragraph kind of a reflection piece on, on the film. I was thinking that that would be an appropriate kind of assessment piece for this film. And so um, that's, that's the presentation and that's, um, yeah, that's, that's it. So if anyone has any questions or I'll, I'll stop sharing. Thank you, Dr. I know you have published a nice book. Right? Oh, oh you know my book. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> anyway, we will share it out as a reference later because of timing. But anyway, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, before, this, uh, before discussing the future of Korean American studies, um, I'd like to acknowledge people behind the scene who made this long webinar possible. So I'd like to share a PowerPoint uh, so we can move on quickly. So let me share. Okay. And all this PowerPoint, uh, you will be uh, receiving it. So I'm hoping. Okay. You all see the this PowerPoint, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't want to, uh, like same as uh, Dr. Wu, I don't want to show my notes there. <laughs> but anyway, this Korean American Ethnic Studies Supplementary Curriculum webinar was seven week long. This is our last day. Um, and I really want to, first of all, thanks to all the Korean Ethnic Studies Model Curriculum authors 
And I have uh, identified here, uh, as you can see, Dr. Edward Chang, he published three uh, lessons. Uh, he submitted three of them. Miss um, uh, Ellen Park and also uh, others. Um, Ms. Yoon Ji Kang, John Park, Dr. John Park, Ms. Helen Kang, and also uh, Suzio, uh, thank you for your lesson plan that you submitted for us. Okay. And also uh, I wanna thank the supplementary curriculum development team. And this team consists of the teachers and teacher educators, of uh, uh, teacher professors. And they, we, develop, we spent the whole summer developing um, the supplementary uh, materials. Uh, let me move on to, we also wanna thank the Korean Ethnic Study Task, uh, task Force, uh, which, uh, hold on, let me, I don't know why my thing is not working here. Oh, yeah. that's, um, okay, uh, Ethnic Studies, so, Ethnic Studies uh, Task Force. So there were so many people, so I just wanna uh, highlight here. Um, the task force actually, they, uh, what they did is, okay, hold on, sorry. Okay, uh, the task force raised awareness of Korean ethnic studies and they advocated for the need of curriculum to Korean community. And we did conduct a petition drive we collected over 5,000 signatures, which was submitted to CDE before the approval of this ethnic study model curriculum. And also our ethnic studies model curriculum reviewers, some of the reviewers uh, are listed here. They provided feedback and comments on the ethnic study model curriculum before submitting to Instructional Quality Commission to CDE. And also the Korean American Ethnic Studies Advisory Committee which was formed by the uh, Consul General Park. And this is the group that they are plan we are planning to organize and convene the inaugural statewide conference on Korean American studies, which was uh, first originally scheduled for October 9th, but now it will be postponed to April 23rd. So we are really thanks all these people. And also we could not have even started this without the support of Korean Consul General's office. And special thanks goes to uh, Consul General and also Educational Council who has been attending here uh, every session. Um, another uh, thank you goes to ICANN for helping us with the technical support, especially President um, Ms. Sung Kim and also Vice President Jin Shin. Thank you for all your support. And advisory committee members, they assisted in, with the webinar and also they are the one who made the, the welcoming remark for this webinar. And of course, thanks to all of you, all the participants. As we conclude this webinar, uh, these are some of the thought, uh, the final thought that you can think of. Uh, I think we should continue allowing stories to be told, tell our own, share stories, advocate for our uh, lives, and also make other vo our voices to be heard. I think that's really important. Um, and as uh, one of the authors said, teaching in a democratic society means teaching the truth. So I think we need to tell the truth. And as a Pearl of Prairie said, education does not transform the world. Education changes people, but people are the ones who's changing the world. So I think we have a lot of work that we have to do now, okay? So before discussing what's next, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Mr. Ru, president of COSA, uh, who will give us, uh, his, who will share his thought with us. Mr. Uh, yeah, I'm very sorry. There's no way to turn on the camera, so. I I'm black now. Uh, oh, I'm at the Office of Korean School Association of America. This is my first time Zoom meeting here. So someone turned off the computer, so I mean, camera, so I, you, you cannot see my face, but it's, this is a great start to educate the people, our second generation, third generation, as well as other ethnic group. And 
it's more important to teach our history and culture to our kids and other ethnic groups. So we are planning to develop the plan, I mean, lesson plan, the support by Korean government, teach our kids. And once it's finalized and I will share with this group and influence to other ethnic group to expand, expand our heritage. And anything else you can put, we can put together, please let us know. We can develop more efficient and well developed plans. Thank you for inviting me today. And I'm very sorry not to see my face. Okay. Thank you. So let's open up for uh, question and answers. I know we are rushing so much, but uh, comments from the audience. Uh, shall we start? Anyone? Anyone can uh, unmute yourself and any what what do you think of our next step it will should be and or any questions you have and dr cho i'm looking at the chat there are no questions but some announcements some announcements okay yeah. yes okay then uh what about uh, if you i know we are still crushing time and I have a couple of things that I need to continue sharing. So uh, let's go back. Um, let me um, share this. Okay. Um, so uh, you will be receiving this PowerPoint. Um, I'll put it on the chat so you can all get it. So if you, it's a live link. If you click it here, you will get the Korean essay study. Sorry, for me. Will you able to see it? Yeah, we can see it. Oh, okay. So if you click it, it will get uh, take you to the California Educator Together website that has all those seven lesson plan developed here, posted. And this resource materials is the all the resources that you have been sharing uh, on the chat for you know so. All the participants have been sharing each day, each week. Uh, so that's what compiled it here. Uh, today's uh, chat, uh, you can go ahead and save uh, for yourself. Um, but this resource material is from uh, last till last week. Okay? Another webinar materials like presentation PowerPoint, recordings, or uh, the homework, evaluation, all, all that is temporarily stored in the ICANN website. So you can access it from that. Um, the supplementary unit lesson plan, this will be available at a, at a later date after incorporating all the feedback. So uh, if you make sure that your content information, especially emails are current, uh, so that's how we will be uh, sending you the information. Uh, uh, announcement is Korean American Ethnic Conference, as I mentioned that, is postponed to April 23rd, and details will be sent to all of you via email. Uh, and then this is the one that uh, is a new project that I want to share with the, all of you. Uh, let me move up here. Okay, what this is, uh, it's a Korean American Studies Unit Plan Contest. So you will be awarded $400 if you get selected. But submission deadline, uh, the first submission deadline is November 1st. So what this is, is develop a thorough and detailed Korean American Studies Unit Plan of any topic for any grade level that make it something applicable to your own class. Uh, but the topic should be uh, talking about something significant to Korean American history that can be used in any K-12 uh, grade classroom. And since it's a uni plan, uh, I prefer two or two five days, or it could be longer, but uh, it's up to you for duration of your own choice. Who can participate? So any past or current classroom teachers of any subject area from any state, they can participate. 
and you will submit detailed unit plan with necessary supporting materials, meaning presentation, if a, lect, uh, if a unit plan need, requires lecture note, and that all the things should be uh, submitted together. And as an example, I have included uh, the one that I shared the first uh, day of webinar, uh, the supplementary uh, unit is in here. It's a live link. Um, so you can take a look at that. Uh, so consider the following elements. So I have list specified there in some mission guideline and send it to myself. And once you are uh, selected, you will be providing us mailing address, email, all those things, but and sign consent form too. But details will come later on. So I'll be sharing, uh, I share this, uh, this live link here. So you can all participate or you can give someone else to participate as well. Uh, any question? You guys are quiet, uh, <laughs> quiet <laughs> today, <laughs> anyway. Um, any other, uh, Jeannie, do you see any comments? No. Or that we need to share? Any last minute uh, remark, Council Choi or anyone? Uh, I just, just wanna say a... that yes. I will miss our weekly meeting so much. <laughs> So Thank you. Um, this has been amazing, not just for, I, I think I speak on, on behalf of so many people and helping me um, center my identity more, not just, not just within myself, but within um, educational spaces, non-professional spaces. It just really has been amazing. And then is there any, I can't remember, did we discuss uh, when we are gonna reschedule the conference? Oh, April 23rd. Oh, okay. Next next spring. Perfect. Thank you. So I will even I will send this PowerPoint uh, to Jeannie Shim so she can post it on the ICANN. Okay. Good so idea. You will have yeah, all this information. A good idea. Thank you. And any other last minute comments? You no, have been a great audience. <laughs> yes. I was just thinking how this is a series like no other, and it's going to help so many students to know their story so that they can tell their story, listen to one another's story with empathy and compassion, and do something good with their story. It's going to be great for Korean Americans, but also for all Americans. So thank you, everyone, for your contribution and support in making this happen. And especially Dr. Cho, uh, since I work so closely with you in this season, your leadership, <laughs> your you. guidance, facilitation. Uh, appreciate you especially, Dr. Cho. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. Uh, if I may uh, raise a question, uh, I see so many people have uh, devoted a lot of time to uh, develop uh, the lesson plans uh, uh, in these uh, seven different units. Uh, uh, what I am questioning to myself, uh, if anyone can answer, is that. Uh, uh, if our Korean American experience uh, section uh, in a textbook uh, for, uh, as I understand that it's gonna be one semester, I don't know whether it'll be one year, but uh, my understanding is a one semester of class will be mandatory uh, if the law is assigned, then how much time will it be week or month will be devoted uh, to our uh, Korean American uh, section, then uh, this many materials may be digested. Uh, so far, even this much amount of uh, work can be easily <laughs> one semester work. So um, exposing um, broad uh, spectrum of uh, Korean American experience of uh, who the Korean ethnic background is uh, who we are to other. This is uh, my thinking is uh, not just uh, uh, teaching our next generation Korean Americans. Uh, this will be exposure of a uh, Korean culture or Korean American experience to other ethnic 
groups. All students. So, uh, yeah, so all students. Uh, so, uh, and uh, ours will be one of the many uh, study, different ethnic studies. Uh, mm -hmm. So it'll be exposure during that the limited time, uh, given time, how much our uh, material can be digested. And once this is exposed, the uh, students when they move on to college, if they develop an interest in, in any ethnic studies, then they can pick up uh, you know, uh, Korean studies, uh, you know, Mexican histories, uh, black histories, whatever, then they can study two years or four years. Uh, I mean, this is uh, a uh, exposure of uh, different ethnic groups. Uh, but the uh, amount of uh, work we have, uh, you uh, educators uh, have uh, put in, uh, will be uh, all covered during the given time. And uh, that time window, how much that will be? That's my question. Does Please. anybody have any idea? It all depends on the class, the, you know, what population of students you have and all that. So it's a long answer. So maybe we should get one-to-one -one <laughs> and then we will try to answer you that way. Um, I know that time has, Yes, I, uh, Council Choi, do you want to say a word or so? And then... uh, yes, um, at the end, the seven times of webinar, finally we did it. And yeah, first uh, I'd like to uh, express my gratitude to uh, Stephen Choi Yuan-Nim because he really played a very important role uh, to reflect Korean American um, ethnic studies to the curriculum model curriculum. Thank you again, and uh, thank you, sure, thank you sure, for yeah. staying. Yeah. Long time no see, we've seen in the morning <laughs> and uh, now on the screen. <laughs> yes, uh, we will continue to take more steps to spread Korean American ethnic studies. So we hope that you will keep watching us because your interest and support is very important for us. So thank you and. Stay healthy and happy during this pandemic period. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Mm -hmm. Hope to yeah. see you. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you Thank in April. You. Bye, Bye, everyone. Thank you.